Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So far, 12 problems have completed on computing the income from capital gain. So far, we have done the computation of long term capital gain. But in this video, I'm going to explain you about how to compute the short term capital gain. Apart from that, some new provisions are also there for those assets which are used in the business and which are depreciable asset. So these are some new points. Remember, all the problems are not same. Every problem you will come across one or two new points. So you have to focus on those new points. So if you want the complete knowledge, watch all the videos from beginning till end. Now before starting the 13th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take the screenshot of these few problems, then I'll explain. Come on, see the 13th problem. During the previous year, relevant to the current assessment year, Srimati Swapna sold the following assets. Compute the income from capital gain and tax liability if income from other heads is nil for the current assessment year. Current assessment year is 23-24 and the previous year 22-23. So during this previous year, the SSC Srimati Swapna sold three type of assets. House let out for commercial, open land in city and gold. All the three are capital asset and any gain arising on the transfer of this capital asset is a capital gain taxable. Now particular so date of purchase 21st March 1999 for house. Actually if the house is sold within two years it's a short term capital gain. If the house is sold after two years it's a long term capital gain. So here more than two years so there is a long term capital gain on sale of house. Open land in city purchased on 1st May 2005 it was purchased on 1st May 2005 now during the current previous year it is sold so more than three years for land there is more than three years so it is a long term gold purchased on 4th May 2009 purchased in 2009 and sold in 2022-23 so again it's a long term so all the assets are long term capital assets Date of sale 13th Jan 2023, the current previous year. Then purchase price is given for all the three assets. Sale price consideration is given. Transfer expenses 0.5%. Cost inflation index for 2005-2006 117. For 2009-2010 148. And for current previous year 2022-23 it is 331. It is not given in the problem. You must remember. Now, computation of long term capital gain, Srimati Sotna, house, open land, gold, three columns I have bid. Consideration received, this is the sale price given in the problem. Minus transfer expense are given 0.5% for house, 1% for open land and 2% for gold. So I have calculated 0.5% on 26 lakh, 13,000. 1% of 20 lakh 85,000, 20,850 and 2% 2 of 3 lakh 6,000. Subtract, we got the net consideration. Now from this, we deduct indexed cost of acquisition because it is a long term capital asset. Right? Purchase price is given in the problem. Uh, purchase price are 10 lakh 10,000. So 10 lakh 10,000 into 331 divided by 100. Why I am taking 100? Because this house was purchased in 1999. If any asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the index number of purchase years should be taken as 100. Then 33,43,100. Secondly, the purchase price of open land 5,85,000. So 5,85,000 into 331 divided by. When it was purchased 2005-2006. For 2005 2006, 117 is the index. It comes to 16,55,000. Then, last one gold. Gold, the purchase price is 38,480 into 331 divided by. It was sold, uh, it was purchased in 2009. So, 2009 2010, 148 divided by 148. We got 86,060. That's all. Now, deduct this cost of acquisition. 
in the first case 25 lakh 87,000 minus 33 lakh 43,100 you are getting negative negative means there is a long term capital loss on house there is a long term capital loss on open land there is a long term capital gain and gold also long term capital gain so two assets we have long term capital gain and one asset we have loss so according to the provisions of income tax act a long term capital loss can be set off from long term capital gain so take the gain on open land 4 lakh 9150 gain on gold 207940 total gain 617090 from this we deduct long term capital loss on house 7,056. Still we are having long term capital loss. The complete loss cannot be absorbed in long term capital gain. Some capital loss is still there. This capital loss can be carried forward to the next year and in the next year from long term capital gain it will be deducted if it is there. Otherwise this long term capital loss cannot be set off from income from other ends. Now tax liability is new. She don't have any other income, only she is having income from long term. So that too there is a loss. So the tax liability will be nil. That's it. Now 14th problem. During the previous year relevant to the current assessment year, Mr. Quick purchased a house for 4,20,000 and after 12 months he sold the same for 4,80,000. That means the SSC Mr. Quick hold the property only for one year after one year he sold it so if land and building is held for up to two years it is a short term if it is hold for for more than two years it's a long term but he sold within two years so the gain arising is a short term capital gain first time we are coming across a problem on short term so far all long term we have done so first of all in examination you should write a note the SSC sold the house within a period of two years of purchase. So the gain arising is short term capital gain. Then brokerage paid to purchase the house 10,000 and to sell the house 18,000. These are the transfer price. So there is brokerage paid at the time of purchasing and there is brokerage paid at the time of selling. Then calculate capital gain. First of all, remember one point. There is no indexing allowed for short term. Indexation is allowed only for long term capital asset. Here it is a short term capital asset, no indexing. So how to compute here? Mr. Quick, computation of short term capital gain. Concentration received 4,80,000. The house was sold for 4,80,000. For selling the house, some brokerage is paid that are transfer expenses. Deduct transfer expenses 18,000. 462,000 is the net consideration received. From this, deduct the cost of acquisition. Cost of acquisition consists of purchase price and brokerage paid to purchase the house. The purchase price is 420,000. And brokerage paid at the time of purchasing the house is 10,000. The total cost of acquisition is 430,000. Deduct 430,000. 32,000 is the short term capital gain, right? The short term capital gain will be included along with other incomes and taxed on slab basis. No indexation should be done on short term capital gain. That's it. <clears throat> Next, 15th problem. Mr. Jimmy purchased the equity share listed of a limited company on 14th December 2021 for 2,80,000. On 24th March 2022, he sold the same for 3,50,000. The cost inflation index 22-23 is 331. Calculate capital gain. First of all, for financial assets, for shares, the holding period is one year. If the SSC hold the shares only for one year, within one year he sold it. It's a short term. If the SSC hold the share for more than two years, it's a long term. Here it is given he has purchased in December 21 and sold on 24th March 2022 within one year. So gain arising on sale of share is a short term capital gain because for equity share holding period is only one year. If it is held for more than one year, it would have been long term. Right? So 
Mr. Jimmy competition of STCG. Consideration received 3,50,000. Sale price minus transfer expenses are not there. Minus cost of acquisition. He purchased it for 2,80,000. 70,000 is the short term capital gain. No indexing should be done for short term capital gain. That point you have to write in examination. Next. 16. Srimati Rukmini purchased a flat. The problem number 16. Srimati Rukmini purchased a flat for 14,50,000 in Krishna Apartments, Dwarka, in 2nd November 2021. She sold the same to Radha on 3rd July 2022. So on November 21, she purchased and July 22, she sold. That means within one year. For property, actually, for house building, the period of holding is two years. Up to two years short term, over two years it's a long term. But within two years she sold it. So gain arising is a short term capital gain. For 16 lakh, the selling expense is 11,000, cost inflation index 20 to 23, ignore. Whenever short term capital gain is there, ignore the cost inflation index. Compute income from capital gain for the current assessment year. So simple. So in examination first you write down. The SSC has sold the house within two years of purchase. So the asset is a short term capital asset. Consideration received 16 lakh less transfer expenses 11,000 net consideration 15 lakh 89,000 minus cost of acquisition 14 lakh 50,000. The short term capital gain is 1 lakh 39,000 finished. Next 17th problem. Srimati Deepak Agarwal purchased a machinery for business purpose uh, whose written down value at the beginning of the previous year is 17,25,000. During the previous year it is sold for 21,40,000 and selling expenses 11,200. Calculate capital gain. One new point is there in this problem. According to the provisions of Income Tax Act, if an asset which is used in the business and which is a depreciable asset, that means the asset on which depreciation is allowed as per IT rules. That depreciable asset is sold. Irrespective of the period of holding, the gain arising will always be short term. For example, if the machine is purchased, machine is a depreciable asset. Building is a depreciable asset. Furniture is a depreciable asset. The building, equipment, furniture, machinery, if these depreciable assets are used in the business, and it is sold during the previous year, the gain arising will always be short term, irrespective of the period of holding. For example, the building was purchased 15 years, 20 years back, still it is a short term. Machinery was purchased nearly 10 years back, still it is a short term. Period of holding should not be considered. Only two conditions you have to see. It is an asset, which is a depreciable asset, and which is used in the business. So in our problem, it is given the machinery is a depreciable asset. Now, consideration received 21,40,000 it is sold. Selling expenses are 11,200 direct net consideration. From this, we deduct the return down value or book value of the asset. The return down value, WDV, return down value of the machine at the beginning of the year is 17,25,000. So we should not take cost of acquisition we should take the book value of the machinery. So direct will get 4,3800 as short term capital gain. In examination, you have to write in note. Machinery is a depreciable asset which is used in the business. So gain arising on sale is a short term capital gain irrespective of the period of holding. No uh, indexation will be allowed. That's it. Next problem, 18th one. Mr. Mohan Raju of 84 years of age, 84 years means super senior citizen. For super senior citizen, the basic exemption limit is 5 lakh. That point you remember. Then, which is used, building which is used for running his business. Again, building is a depreciable asset which is used in the business. So any gain arising on the sale of building is a short term capital gain. On 1st April 2022, the book value of the building is 15,30,000. Calculate the capital gain and tax on it. If it is sold during the previous year for 18 lakh and the selling expense are 50,000. 
income from other heads are 3 crore 14 lakh 20,000. This is the income from other heads, right? So any short term gain, short term capital gain will be included with this other income. Because for short term capital gain, no flat rate is there. Slab system will apply along with other incomes. <coughs> How to compute? Mr. Mohan Raj, computation of short term capital gain from sale of machinery. So consideration received 18 lakh less transfer expenses 50,000 net consideration 17 lakh 50,000 from this deduct the book value or written down value at the beginning of the year that is 15 lakh 30,000 so 2 lakh 20,000 is a short term capital gain on the sale of building this short term capital gain will be added to income under other heads so income from other heads 3 crore 14 lakh 20,000 plus short term capital gain 2 lakh 20,000 the total income will become 3 crore 16 lakh 40,000 this is the total income right now slab income rate tax for super senior citizen those people who have crossed the age of 80 years 80 plus they are called super senior for them the basic exemption limit is 5 lakh so up to 5 lakh rupees, income 5 lakh, nil, no tax. The next slab goes from 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh. 5 lakh 1 rupee to 10 lakh, 5 lakh rupees, 20% is the rate of tax. So 20% of 5 lakh, 1 lakh. Now balance. Over 10 lakh, whatever is the limit, over 10 lakh, the balance will be taxed at 30%. So total income is 3 crore 16 lakh 40,000 from 3 crore 16 lakh 40,000 deduct 10 lakh first 5 lakh next 5 lakh if you deduct 10 lakh the balance is 3 crore 6 lakh 40,000 3 crore 6 lakh 40,000 into 30 percent you will get 91 lakh 92,000 now take the total 91 lakh 92,000 plus 1 lakh 92,92,000 is the tax on total income. The tax on total income 92,92,000. Now, first time we are coming across surcharge. Surcharge means a tax on tax. Additional tax which is applied, not to everyone. Those SSCs whose total income exceeds 50 lakh during the previous year. So if it is 50 lakh, if, if it is more than 50 lakh, up to 1 crore, 10%. From 1 crore to 2 crore, it is 15%. From 2 crore to 5 crore, it is 25%. So we have to see, if the total income of the SSC is more than 2 crore and up to 5 crore, the surcharge rate is 25%. Note it down immediately. 25%, right? So up to 50 lakh rupees of income, no surcharge at all. Now here it is more than 2 crore, but less than 5 crore. So 25% surcharge. So 25% of 92 lakh 92,000, 23 lakh 23,000 add up. You will get 1 crore 16 lakh 15,000. This is the tax. On this tax, health and education says 4% mandatory, compulsory. So 4% of 1 crore 16 lakh 15,000, 4 lakh 64,600 add up. The final tax liability comes to 1 crore 20 lakh 79,600. This is the tax liability of Mr. Mohan Raju, who is a super senior citizen. That's all. I got many, uh, I mean, messages, many comments that students uh, want the problems regarding computation of tax liability. Every now and then we'll come across problems on computing the tax liability and this is the best case where surcharge is also applicable. So this is the end of problem number 18. Inshallah we will continue the next problem in the next video.